Saturday. Later today, Mike Krzyzewski will coach against John Chaney and Eddie Sutton against Bob Knight. But right now, it's time for ACC action from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. On a Hall of Fame Saturday, our matchup at the Dean Smith Center, the Tar Heels, the number four team in the country, against the number 21 Terrapins of Maryland. Welcome to ESPN HD, presented by Phillips, the new big picture in sports. Welcome, everybody, to Chapel Hill. As my mom would say, we never really got divorced. We were only separated. I'm Brad Nessler with Dick Vitale. Good to be back, partner, and talk about Hall of Fame, guys. Well, I'll tell you, it's super having you back in college basketball. Really great. It's our game. You talk about Hall of Fame, guys, Brad. Certainly, when you talk Roy Williams and Gary Williams, there's no doubt they'll be enshrined up in the beautiful Hall of Fame in Springfield, Mass. They are absolute winners. I'll tell you one thing. This is the kickoff of what I call major, major battles in the ACC. Almost a thousand wins between the two Williams, almost three thousand wins in the four guys that you're going to see a little bit later on today. Let's take a look at our Star Watch, Dick. Well, you talk about the Star Watch, it starts with point guard play. You really talk about great point guards. Obviously, John Gilchrist was the MVP of the ACC tournament. Has to have an A game here today for Maryland to have a chance to lead with a W. Raymond Felton is the catalyst who creates so many opportunities for all his people around him, and he has terrific talent around him. And Gilchrist on the other side had his string of 20-point games stopped the other night, but that's because he didn't play the last six or seven minutes. So a matchup with a lot of talent. One team, 9-2 and two in Maryland. The Tar Heels are 12-1. and one. Doris Burks, the third member of our team, she'll join us in just a moment. Sold-out crowd here and a very ready ACC crowd. You can just feel it. It's up a notch excitement-wise when these two types of teams get together. Larry Rose, Reggie Cooper, and Ted Valentine are officials, and we're just about set from Chapel Hill. You know, Brad, you're so right about the atmosphere. It's really changed here. It has become so much livelier of a place. It used to be a place where people sat on their hands. Not any longer. Roy Williams has this place jumping, baby, jumping. And it's Sean made him a cancer off the break and off the tip in. It's North Carolina. A set play right out of the store. They release the cats, takes it to the goal with authority. Boy, you can't do it any better off a jump ball than that. That was designed. That was set up before the game. This is the part they have to buy into, playing on the defensive side. So this off the opening tip as we get another look at it. There's the tip. There's the simple play. They release McCants from the wing. Great conversion. The key, of course, is to win the jump ball. Got to get the jump ball. In the corner for three, and it goes. That's nice start for Travis Garrison. That's going to have to be there for Maryland. They're going to have to make the perimeter three. The team really, if you look at this team versus last year, the one factor they miss is Jamar Smith in a post. Here's Sean May down low, and he leaves it inside. Another great pass, and this one's to Jackie Manuel. How about the two assists so far for the big guy, Sean May? Well, that's why they're a much better basketball team. They share the ball so well. Gil Crest the kick out. Garrison hit one from the other side. That one rims out from the right side, and May with a rebound. May, a big-time rebound. has been in fire his last seven games. Boy, the pace of this thing is unbelievable early. Williams underneath a great feed from Felton. Felton with a great look. He has the terrific he was one step ahead of him. He knew as soon as that ball was coming over, it was going diagonally. Three-point Carolina lead here in the first minute and a half. Nice crossover dribble by McCray. Garrison, same spot. And he hit the first one, but he's missed the last two. That's the one concern of Gary Williams. He doesn't want his club to become a three-point shooting club. And Felton hangs in midair. And now four of the five starters for Carolina have already scored. They have so many weapons. Where do you start to defend them? They can hurt you in so many places. And that jump ball possession will stay with the Terrapins. If I had to do my midseason report on the best players in America, they have three. And you know what? I'm not convinced they don't have four by factor in Jawad Williams. Here's the starting lineups. McCray, Gil, Chris, Kaner, Medley, Garrison, and Beckway. Felton, McCants, Manuel, Williams, and May. The only guy in North Carolina that hasn't scored is Sean May. And he's already got two assists and a steal. And now he might score, except he lost his footing. I thought he got fouled there. I did, too. I thought he got hooked. Comes right back to Maryland. They've got numbers, and they throw it away. Good anticipation by McCants. Right now, Maryland's going to have to defend a lot more. And he's got to pull a carry there. Gary Williams, 100% right with that. Two turnovers on back-to-back -back possessions, and Gary is already in mid-game form. 
what a terrific coach. What he has done for his alma mater, winning a national title. 324 wins in Maryland, 531 in his career, and then Roy on the other side with 449. So when I said they almost have a thousand between them, I wasn't kidding around. Here's inside move in the first basket for Kaner Medley. Kaner Medley with that nice little curl move in the lane. Look at that speed. Felt right back down. What, what a shot! Gilchrist trying to answer on the other end and does. And this is an unbelievable pace. These are two of the top three scoring teams in the country, and they're playing like it right now. Well, 92 a game for North Carolina, 88 for Maryland, and they are really going up and down the floor. I have a little problem with stats this early in the season. Off the side of the backboard, Williams will get another chance, but he lost it. Raymond Felton has become such a dynamite performer. Inside. Good move and a great key, and Garrison's got five early. Terrific job by Maryland getting into transition. That's the key here today. You've got to make teams play five on five. You take a look at all the Carolinas' points in the paint. You have to be able to make the game become five on five and to gain all those opportunities in transition. Back in the paint they go. Williams trying to find the handle, and finally a whistle and a foul underneath. What a year he's had thus far. I mean, you talk about North Carolina, Brad. Who do you think about? You think about the big three. Right. Well, you look at his stats. They're amazing. Probably the most underrated guy in the ACC as Roy Williams looks on his team up by one right now, but they've led by as many as five. Gary Williams went one step further with you and I before the game. He said Jawad Williams, the most underrated player in America. In America. Well, he's the leading scorer, and he's not the guy that anybody talks about because you said it's usually Felton, McCants, May, whatever. Here's Jawad Williams at 17 a game, fifth best in the conference, and he's shooting 65, 66% from the floor as well. And he can go inside, outside, has that rare ability, and he's really a kid that's not worried about the lineup. If I think there's one factor that's changed Carolina this year, is they've all bought into the common denominator of win, 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 our number one goal. And they come with Marvin Williams off the bench, Roy Williams' first substitution. Gilchrist, nice crossover dribble, and boy, what a sweet-looking shot and move that was. I'll tell you, who can ever forget the show he put on in the ACC tournament last year when they beat Wake North Carolina State and Duke. May underneath, and now all five starters for Carolina in the books. 24 game in the ACC and put a great show on, almost similar to what Randolph Childress did in the early 90s. He thought about a three there, he'll take the baseline jumper instead. And we know, and Gary Williams knows, and Dick, you talked about it a little bit, Gilchrist has to have a big game if Maryland's going to play with Carolina in this one. He has to have an A game, he has to be super, he's such a key component in their offensive system. Garrison wasn't looking. And Maryland gets the ball back anyway. Evacue with the outlet pass, hit Garrison in the back of the head. So North Carolina continuing to score inside. That's where everything's coming from so far. We're going to watch the play inside. They're going to try to get May to handle. He's got great hands, great touch. As we know about his pedigree, his dad was player of the year back in North Carolina, 1976. Has a very strong... Indiana in 76. Indiana in 76. Has a very strong father and son relationship. As does Raymond Felton with his dad. And that's beautiful to see kids that have that dad that they can go to for guidance and direction. DJ Strawberry, speaking of dads, he's got one that was pretty famous as a baseball player. Comes in for the first time this afternoon, and McCray will sit down. And certainly has not been the role model to DJ that the situation is with Scott. And I don't say that negatively, but it's a fact. It's a simple fact of life. The Beckway got one or two from the free throw line, and he's going to sit down and get a breather. And James Gist will come into the lineup for Maryland. We hope that Darrell now seems to have his problems behind him and starts to change and goes on to live a very fruitful life. Carolina, another two inside, easy stuff for me. I'll tell you, he's so great on the inside and it presents such problems with his post presence. That really creates a dilemma. You know, Dick, Carolina comes into this as the number one team in the conference in assists, and I can see why, because everything's coming off assists right now. They average 22 a game. All of their points in the paint for Carolina with the exception of the two free throws. And with 15.49 to go first half, everybody up. Carolina leading Maryland by four. presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And one a day men's health formula, a complete multivitamin plus lycopene for prostate health.
Gorgeous outside in Chapel Hill and warming up inside in a hurry. Carolina by four. Third member of our team is Doris Burke. Doris. So Brad, for Maryland coach Gary Williams, he told me that playing Carolina this season as opposed to last differs in two distinct ways. Number one, depth. Carolina, eight guys averaging at least 15 minutes. The second and perhaps more important, the shooting of Raymond Feltman. Felton, a season ago, he was not solid from three-point territory. This year, 55%, guys. It spreads you out defensively. It's a major challenge. Last year, you could just try to keep Felton in front of you. This year, you have to guard him. Boy, you got to guard everybody right now. Felton's got four, May's got four, and May's been all over the court, it seemed, with assists and rebounds and steals. Well, as Doris directed out, you really got to guard everyone. With May's presence inside, it does stretch the defense. And when you got shooters like McCann, Felton, and certainly when you talk about Williams, they're all three-point threats. And Scott off the bench as well. Scott is in there right now. There's a zone right now by Maryland. Go to his zone, try to collapse inside on May. They double-team May, and he loses it out of bounds. So that's the fourth Carolina turnover. He said he was really tough on himself last year. Year. Kid averaged 15 a game, nine rebounds a game. Had some meetings with his dad. Has his dad look at film with him. His dad was such a terrific player on the best team that I have ever seen play as a unit. That Indiana out. team, incredible in '76 with Butler and Wilkinson and May. Of course, Bob Knight's team, and you'll see Bob Knight in action later on today against Eddie Sutton. Texas Tech plays Oklahoma State on our Hall of Fame Saturday. May the outlet threw it away. Good rebound, bad decision. Strawberry with that steal anticipates well. And he'll go all the way to the rack. I'll tell you, he's a great sixth man. He's one of my old Rolloids, Rolloids specialists. Ryan can come off the bench and give you a spark. So that cuts the lead down to two. Maryland staying right with North Carolina. Well, look at eight out of nine players back from the team that won the ACC championship. They're not going to back down from anyone. Well, how about that block shot by Gist? I'll tell you, Gist got great legs. He's a terrific jumper. I love this kid with the rock in his hand. Met his dad today. Great family. And you're out of Virginia Beach. John Gilchrist and looking for a shot, it appears. He draws a double team. Nice job of hedging there defensively. The runner goes, and we're tied at 16. And it doesn't matter. He takes it one-on-one. -on -one. He's got that great body strength. Foul line to foul line. I don't think anybody in America is as quick as Raymond Felton with the rock. Here's Scott. The outside three. Got it. He's been struggling shooting, but that'll get him some PT, some play in time. His 22nd three-pointer of the year puts Carolina right back in front by a triple. How good are they? He started last year. And a Beckway knocks it down from the outside. A Beckway, a kid out of California, great potential as a shot blocker. He's got a challenge on his hands, playing May inside. Felton, he'll try it again. And try to tip it in on the inside was David Noel. And now Maryland with another opportunity to take the lead, a whistle and a foul. Silly foul right there by Noel. He's an athlete, gives him some athletic ability off the bench. They're a deeper team also because the presence of Marvin Williams, one of the diaper dandies that I believe is going to become a superstar at North Carolina. He's one of those guys I call will have a breakout year in his second year. Almost 10 points a game and over six rebounds. A high school McDonald's and Parade All-American last year on everybody's list. And you know, with the kind of players he's playing around, he's not going to get as many right. points or rebounds. He's playing 21.8 minutes a game. Ball loose. Picked up by Strawberry. And he carried, he it. carried it. Yes, sir, he carried it. Teddy Valentine, they're not going to let them get away with that here today. That's the second call we made. One each way. I talk about potential freshman. Waiting to see this killer, Marcus Aldridge at Texas. He has a chance to really be special. Not yet. And the same with Randolph Morris at Kentucky. I throw them in there as well with Russell Robinson of Kansas. And also Marvin Williams as future stars. And your diaper dandies, huh? Yeah, future stars. Rudy Gay in Connecticut as well. Tainer Medley almost coming up with a steal. We have not had to worry about the shot clock in this game. I'll tell you, we're seven minutes in, and it's Carolina by one. Well, this is what Maryland wants. They want to basically make it a five-on-five -five game. They don't want to go up and down. They like to run, but they want to control North Carolina's transition. Belton was looking for a foul call there. Didn't get it. Knocked out of bounds. It'll still be North Carolina ball. And I lost to Santa Clara. Open the game. Didn't have Raymond Felton. Right. I thought after that game, they've dominated everyone, with the exception of Indiana, who made the game a five-on-five -five game and really challenged. That's what Maryland's trying to do right now. But since that loss to Santa Clara, 12 straight victories for the Tar Heels to make them the number four team in the country. I tell you, the way they started out in the first seven minutes of this game, you look at it, if you're Gary Williams, you like where you're sitting. Absolutely. Because, I mean, North Carolina came out with purpose right off that tip when they got the quick layup. See what they've got as an inbound play. Into Marvin Williams. The guy Dick just oh. talked about. 
And now Maryland's going to get the lead because here's Strawberry on the break. Well, Strawberry gets the jam and transition. No one rotated back. They were all mesmerized. They were all watching Marvin Williams. They were like the Kodak man, taking pictures, and nobody rotated back. <laughs> Maryland with a one-point lead as well as Carolina's play in Maryland leads. And now a double dribble. The turnovers really have been part of the problem for North Carolina, too. They didn't have any early. And if now they Mar have six. If Marvin Williams jams that baby, this house just absolutely erupts. I mean, he did like, he was good in this. The way he was trying to come from that foul line. See, nobody rotated back. And there's the easy layup for Strawberry. As you said, everybody was standing around watching him. They were taking pictures. They were like the Kodak man. I mean, I could have made that layup that Strawberry made. I don't think you would have done it quite <laughs> as high as he did. <laughs> no, I, you got that, I would have put the knee up in the air, laid it on a glass. Uh, it's great having you back, man. I know you had that blowout in football. There's only so much a guy can do with that, so that kind of blowout. That's for sure. You did a great job. And whistle and offensive foul. A second out of Equay, and he has been foul prone when these two teams get together. In fact, he fouled out of both these games last year, so uh, they're going to pull him right now. Gary's going to sit him down. And Garrison will come in to take his spot. Well, he's out of history again for foul trouble. Last year, he was getting a number of fouls, a little silly fouls that you expect at a freshman, but he's too important. He's got to stay out of foul trouble. They really miss Smith's post presence. And a walk. Good call. Larry Rose was right on top of the move there by Noel. And Noel with a couple of turnovers since he's come in. Maryland right now has changed the tempo and has made it become a little bit more five-on-five. Five. You must neutralize that transition of North Carolina or you don't have a shot. Strawberry now running things at the point. Good look by Garrison, but he didn't get the pass to Tanner Medley, who finally does end up with it in the corner. Missed a three, Felton three on one. Here's when they're at their best. They're at their best, usually the transit. Look at a great job of stopping the break. They had numbers. Maryland hustled back, and they made it a five-on-five -five situation. McCray did a great job. Still trying to stay with McCants. Now it's Felton open in the corner. Got it. He made 12 in a row at one time this year from the trifecta. Why, my friends? He worked all summer, 600 jump shots a day, with his dad pounding on him about bringing your arm. He had like a chicken wing, and he made it more vertical, and it's made him a better shooter. He's 12th in the country as the slam by Gist on the other end closes the gap again and ties it, in fact, at 22. But Felton is 12th in the country in three-point shooting. He's at 55-plus percent. Maryland now turns it over, Carolina turns it over rather again, and it's McCray, and he's fouled underneath. Maryland does a great job in taking a turnover the other way. That's been part of Gary Williams' system. We've been tied twice at 16 and now at 22. Gary Williams, one of the best at beating the best. We'll explain what we're talking about when we return. Back in Chapel Hill, tied at 22. Dean Smith won more games than anybody else in history, and he won some huge games and did great against top-ranked teams. A lot of times he was the top-ranked guy. Gary Williams against number one teams, six wins. That's what we were talking about is sometimes he's at his best against the best. I'll tell you one thing. Who's number, number one, though? Who's That's number the question. One? Wow, who is number one? We better reveal that. It's driving me Digger crazy. Digger Phelps? Oh, no. Digger Phelps. I knew it. I knew it was going to be my guy, Digger. You know why? Digger sent that in. He called up the truck. Yeah. He said, well, they put that up number one for me. Digger's smiling right now. Richard Phelps is on cloud nine. Oh, we have to live with that. I have to live with that. Yep. There's a couple of Hall of Famers there. Absolutely. <laughs> Digger's number one. <laughs> oh, said it. Digger, I didn't say it, bro. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you, he had a great career at Notre Dame. It's been a long time since they've been what he achieved down there. We can never forget when he beat UCLA with that 88-game win streak. Hey, Digger showed up when I was at Notre Dame just to give me a signed copy of his book for Christmas. It's the first gift I got this year and one of my most cherished. Well, he didn't. Well, wait a minute. What about mine? <laughs> what about mine? He I don't know where it is. It's lost in the mail. <laughs> he probably charged you. Maryland with a two-point lead. That's their biggest of the ball game. I tell you, the Terps have a great environment. We're going to love going down here. One of our big Saturdays against Duke. Just a ball. Oh, oh what a throwback by oh, Gist. Oh, look at those legs out of that. You can't teach that. I mean, Gary Williams and his staff can work all day. They're not teaching that, baby. A long one-handed rebound jam all in one move. And a four-point Maryland lead. That one just stunned the crowd, I'll tell you that much. They're a little quiet right now. Absolutely. A little quiet. A little silent. That's the one thing I love. I love when I did a game the other day with Kansas. was down 16 at Georgia Tech. That 
crowd just kept cheering and cheering and cheering. Look at Maryland right now. They're just running the floor, having a great time. Block shot on the other end was by Garrison, but watch the miss by Gilchrist and the follow by Gist. I tell you, Gist has the great legs. That's what I'm talking about. You can't oh. teach that. I mean, that's high wire. Look at the extension. That's in the plays of the day on Sports oh, Center. Yes, I guarantee sir. you that. No doubt about it. Look at the extension wow. of that arm. Marvin Williams with a foul will send him afraid of the free throw line where he hit his first two and missed that one. He's one of my blenders. He's a guy that doesn't, you know, get a lot of publicity, but he blends in and he does all the intangibles. Josh Pace in Syracuse, Luther Head, Illinois, McFarland at Oklahoma State, and Jawan Williams doesn't get publicity down here. Plays behind the big three. He's a great blender. They do whatever they can to help the club. McRae with three points. He's been a double figures in all but two games this year. And averaging a little over 13 of all games. Man to man defense by Maryland. Quentin Thomas in now at the point with Felton getting a breather. Thomas got the first start against Santa Clara back in his hometown. And it was a tough situation losing to Santa Clara. Daniel missed a three. Gilchrist with a rebound. So Maryland now with a five point lead and the ball. Here's a turnover by Maryland. And Thomas pushes it ahead. West Carolina really deep into their bench here with this club that's on the floor. Scott with a three off the mark. Garrison trying to track down the rebound, and uh, he's looking for a tackle call for Le <laughs> over in the corner and doesn't get it. Hey, if you're Maryland right now, you got to take advantage of the fact that Felton and May and him are out of the yep. lineup. you got to really try. Here comes McCants, and he's got to get a little livelier with his game, too. He's got to get a little more active. He's only taken one shot thus far. There you see the ball was loose, and there was contact, but you can see Garrison saying, how about a foul that pushed me out of bounds? That's not the call. Carolina will inbound. May's back in there now for the Tar Heels. Along with Manuel and Thomas, McCants having a look over Williams. Thought about a long jumper. They got to get him going. He's too good a player. He's got to start going. There, there he is. is. He's the most versatile offensive threat in America. He can beat you from long range with the three. He can take it to the basket. He can post on you. He is really a terrific offensive player. He just woke up the hometown crowd as they all stand there. Gilchrist trying to quiet him, and he does. And he quiets the crowd, and his dad jumps with joy. What a great family. What a strong body he has. Looks like he can be a running back. Five-point lead, and now Carolina turns it over again. And the Terrapins trying to go up by seven, but May blocked the shot inside. McCray just throws it up there, and May with a rebound. Tough transition right there. Usually they convert in that situation. That would have been big. That would have been a seven-point lead. Oh, somebody hit the deck down in the paint and hurt down there. Gist really went down hard, and Ted Valentine's going to stop things right here as Gist is going to limp off his right leg. He got tangled up in there, and he really hit the deck hard. He's the high wire act, great jumper, made that terrific offensive rebound earlier in the game. See if we can find out what happened to him in the pileup. Oh, there he is. He stepped on his own guy. He stepped on Kaner Medley's ankle and turned his own. And that's friendly fire. So a lot of pain. and That's a big loss because yeah. his athleticism and his quickness is needed in a game like this where North Carolina is so athletic. Dick, you've talked a couple of times about the Santa Clara game. This is the biggest deficit Carolina's faced since that Santa Clara game. Their only loss. Down by five. Oh, Gilchrist. Charge right there. Yeah. Reggie Coker with the call. Gilchrist trying to take it to the goal. He's really on his A game on here this afternoon. Gilchrist really playing well other than you see the turnover right here with the charge. Sean May takes the charge. What hasn't Sean May done so far today? He's been involved with block shots, taking a charge. He had two at the first two assists of the ball game. Rebound, steals, and scoring. He's done everything. He just had one go through his legs. I shouldn't have talked about it. Tough pass, though. That was a tough pass to handle. He's got great hands, but that was driven at his feet. Monday night, big Monday. And a big college basketball doubleheader. Syracuse and Notre Dame at 7, and then UConn and Oklahoma will tip off at 9. Big Monday presented by Bud Light on ESPN Monday night. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And somebody better get Jimmy Beheim and show him how to find the airport. That's the first <laughs> time they leave in the state of New York. Hey, I'm Ken serious. Has Kansas been away from home? Oh, yeah, I don't think so. Bill Self is getting direction how to get to the airport <laughs> this afternoon to go to Kentucky. And... This ball will go over on the arrow to North Carolina. I don't want, what do you think it is? 
I know my buddy Bob Ryan wrote one time, if he could be the czar, some rules he'd like to change. If I could be the king of college hoops, there's one rule I you would make You mean you're sure. not? Okay. I'm not. If right. I could be the king for one day, okay, here's what I would put. You'd have to play at least three games in a pre-conference schedule on the road, excluding tournament play, preseason tournament play. And if you don't do that, you're not eligible for the NCAA tournament. Wow, that's oh, tough. That's, that's tough. tough. You've got to go on a road once in a while. Yeah, you got to go on the road once in a while. Belton back in for North Carolina. They trail by five, 7.45 to go in the half. This is exactly what Gary Williams wants, though. Five on five. Terry from 15. Rayshon Terry. Nice little jumper by Terry. His buddy, Raymond Felton, told me today, he said he's going to help us. They were sitting there before the game watching the junior varsity. Keener Medley, lucky he got a foul call because that was a fourth shot of ever you'll see one. And foul will be on Terry. Good one going here in Chapel Hill. 7.31 remaining till halftime. Maryland by three. The winningest coach ever on the left and one that's closing the gap on the right. Bob Knight was 740. And at 2 Eastern today, he'll take on Eddie Sutton, who's going to be a Hall of Famer as well. That's one of the matchups. And then Temple and Duke, also members of the 700 win club. John Chaney and Mike Krzyzewski square off at 2 Eastern on ESPN. ESPN2, rather. Let's check in with Doris. Brad, just an update. Maryland SID Mark Prado said James Gist is no worse for the wear. He is available to return to this basketball game, guys. Okay, that's good news for them. I may have said Bob Knight was 740 wins. Uh, no, you Eight, meant 840. 840. 840. And certainly tonight when he hooks up with Eddie Sutton, you took up a Hall of Famer. Is Bobby Knight obviously a Hall of Famer? And Eddie Sutton, obviously a guy that should be in a Hall of Famer, will eventually be in a Hall of Famer. Hopefully Coach Sutton feeling better with those broken bones in his lower back from that uh, kind of strange accident out walking around his uh, neighborhood and ended up falling in the ditch when a car was coming toward him and he didn't think the car was going to see him and uh, he was moving pretty slow when I saw him out in Las Vegas but I think he's getting a little bit better week yeah he week. is he really is he's getting a lot better one little short best to Lou Henson as well as Raymond Felton knocks down a trifecta Lou back in the hospital was supposed to coach today he's 21 wins shy of 800 Lou on behalf of everybody at ESPN we sent our best God bless you good fellow absolutely fellas. coach he was in a wheelchair coaching this week and it hopes to come back today but he another one of his seven or rather six active coaches with 700 plus wins. Tanner Medley trying to do too much and he walks with it. That's the eighth Maryland turnover. Good defensive effort right there by North Carolina. Right now, North Carolina, a little spark with Raymond Felton's three. Let's see if they take advantage, go inside to May. Get him some touches again. They're really doing a great job trying to deny May the ball. They've got an opportunity to regain the lead here. Working around the perimeter, Felton on the crossover. Now here is May trying to back in. The one-hander is too strong. And out of bounds, it's going to go to Maryland. You talked about Raymond Felton. We talked about how great a three-point shooter he's been. He has really worked on that shot to bring that elbow in. He's got that vertical look rather than a chicken wing way out to the wide. Hey, Doris, he has really improved that shot. And that's what 600 shots a day will do for you. Yeah, Roy Williams said it's not easy for a player to change his shooting motion after he leaves high school, but it was the repetitive nature of what he did this summer. Dick, you talked about the 600 shots. Remember Kirk Heinrich? For Coach Williams at Kansas, shot 31% as a freshman, went on to be a 50% shooter. Felton following a similar path. Yeah, great point. Coach is such a great shooter, doing a phenomenal job at the Chicago Bulls. We approach the six-minute mark. Long jumper over May. Tough shot. Would have been a tough shot for right. Rebecca. Rebecca trying to take May away from the basket. I love Raymond. Everybody loves Raymond. How could you not like Raymond? <laughs> Sounds like a TV yeah. show on CBS. How could you not like Raymond? Everybody loves him. If I had to pick the preseason top 10 players in America for the midseason report, he would be one of the 10, along with McCants and May. Pretty good guard down here also in Wake Forest by the name of Mr. Paul. Chris Paul and not Justin bad. Gray, both those guys. Yes, and we'll sir. see them next Saturday. North Carolina and Wake Forest. Dick and I'll be there, and that'll be something to watch. Yeah, we'll be down ABC for that. Hey, Wednesday I sit here with Mike Patrick, and we have the game with Jared Jack. And Georgia Tech. Carolina keeps it alive with offensive rebounds, and then Terry knocks down a three, and Carolina back in front, and Gary Williams has seen enough. 
hey, I'll tell you one thing, Raymond Zell should be a coach. He sat with me today. I was here about 8.30, quarter to nine, early in the morning. We sat alone under the basket, and sitting about three seats away from him was Mr. Terry. And he said to me, this guy's going to help us. And you know what? He's right. Coach Felton is 100% right. He's knocked down two big shots. Only the fifth three-pointer of the year for Rashad Terry, the sophomore, but that gives Carolina the lead back and forced the Maryland timeout. Carolina leading 32-30. to 30. Maryland had a five-point advantage. They started to get sloppy. Kaner Medley did a few things. Beckway took a shot he probably shouldn't have, and North Carolina took advantage of both those opportunities to get back in front 32-30. to 30. Hey, the NFL playoffs kick off wild card Saturday on ABC today. First, the Rams take on the Seahawks at 4.30 Eastern. Then in prime time, the NFL rushing leader Curtis Martin of the Jets takes on Drew Brees, the comeback player of the year, the Chargers. NFL wild card Saturday coverage starts 4.30 Eastern after the NBA on ABC. Jets are going to beat the Chargers. Look at that drive right down the lane. Excellent move by Strawberry. Taking the Jets over the Chargers. Yeah, Jets are going to win our role. It's a stake in it. You don't, you don't need a lot of stake. But... I'll tell you, our guys do a great job. Mike Patrick is terrific in the end. Baseline jumper goes again. Another three from the same spot. Only this is Noel this time. David Noel. That's pretty good, Brad. When you can go to the bench and get Noel and Terry and have guys like that contribute. And that is the difference in this team this year. And remember what Gary Williams told you and I in the locker room before the game as Maryland turns it over again. He said they've got too many guys that can shoot threes, and now you're seeing guys off the bench knocking down triples. And he mentioned a lot of guys that we never heard the name Terry. No, we didn't. And he's come out and heard them. I didn't think we heard Noel either. Noel either, <laughs> right? We had four others he mentioned. I tell you, Gary's so prepared as a coach. Takes an analyzed film, evaluates things up nights, watching all kinds of tapes. Told us before the game, I'm a little better before games than I used to be, but when we don't win, I'm no better than I have ever been. So it's still tough to handle losing. He said, I play the game over and over and over. But that's what makes him special. The passion and love he has for what he's doing. It's affected the whole Maryland campus. They feel the same way. It's a great environment down there. Both these coaches, of course, at their alma maters. And the whistle when the foul was on Gist. How good is the ACC? Think about this. North Carolina still has to prove how good they are by ACC play. They were six and ten two years ago. Right. Eight and they were last year eight and eight. You take a look, for example, right now, and you look at Maryland. Maryland wins the ACC tournament last year, and they were like seven and nine in conference play, which was sixth last year. But they knocked off all top three seeds to win the ACC tournament. Check in with Doris. Well, you talk about his passion for coaching. He also has a passion for his alma mater, Gary Williams, pledging $500,000 to the academic scholarship wow. program. He's heading up a $200 million fundraising drive. He is the poster child. Kickstarted it with a big donation, guys. Well, thanks a lot for telling me, Doris, because I'm running to see him a little bit after the game. I need some cash. Maybe you can help me out. <laughs> There's his record. 531 wins. The tournament champions last year. On that national championship, what a special moment for him. Down in Atlanta. So highly respected by his peers. And Roy Williams, you talk about winners. There's only three guys with a better winning percentage than Roy Williams, and they're pretty good names. Well, he's been to four Final Fours. Here's oh, Garrison was all alone, and he put it on the floor thinking about what kind of dunk was coming, and instead it's a turnover. Oh, that turnover hurts right there. You're struggling right now. You're down four. You can cut it to two. Did he dribble that off his foot? Yeah, he, he just lost foot. it, I guess. We are having all kinds of tough time with my monitor here determining what's happening in terms of the replay. Belton trying to pack it inside. Triple team. And Jawad Williams shoots through it, and he's fouled. Strawberry can't believe he got called for a foul right there. He's such a tenacious defensive player. Williams hung in the year to draw the contact. Jawad, a senior out of Cleveland. Been in double figures in every game. He's got four points so far this one. You know, North Carolina leads the ACC coming in now. Score a 92.7. Field goal percentage 52.6. 43.9 from the three. They're even leading in free throw shooting at 71.9, yeah. which is not a great percentage, but it's certainly good. Maryland's number two right behind him at 71.4 from the free throw line. Plus 24.5 scoring margin differential. Yeah. Williams knocks down both. He's four for four from the free throw line. Six points. Carolina on a 14-3 run after Maryland had had a five-point lead. 
They really get into spurts. North Carolina with the explosive transition game, ability to shoot the three, post presence. They hurt you in so many ways. Transition, post presence, tri- trifecta, and the three. This is the biggest lead oh, of the ball game, game, and it's going to get bigger. McCants inside to Felton. I'll tell you the difference in McCants. Last year, he would have tried to force and jam that. Today, he gives the ball off. He has bought into the system. He made a great defensive play, and then he had the ability to make the pass. That was a terrific play by McCants. The turnover, and immediately North Carolina now. A big run. Let's take another look at it. Look at the anticipation like a defensive back. And then he flips the lob up to his teammate and gets the conversion. Last year, he would have been selfish. He was also part of a group of guys that play in college basketball that get affected by three letters. NBA. Uh-huh. Salim Stoudemire has been one. Sean Banks of Memphis has been one. They get so wrapped up about the NBA that they forget about taking care of what they're supposed to do, be the best player they can be representing the jersey that they're wearing. Carolina taking advantage of the Maryland turnovers and turning them into points. Let's check in with Doris. Well, Dick mentioned the difference for Rashad McCants this season. His best friend on the team, perhaps Sean May, he said this in the papers this week. Last year, if Rashad was the second leading scorer on the team, as he is this season, he would have gone out and made sure he got a lot of shots. Today, guys, he's played within himself, not forced his offense at all. Quite a difference for Roy Williams. He still says he has a ways to go, but he's loving his progress. Terrific team effort by North Carolina to come back when Maryland kind of had him a little bit on the ropes. And now they've just blasted out with a run here to take an eight-point lead. They are so explosive, those spurts. You know, I talked about only three guys have a winning percentage, winning a better percentage, winning percentage than Roy Williams. How are these for three names? Claire B was a terrific coach years ago up at LIU. And you talk about Adolf Rupp and John Wooded. And <laughs> then it's good. Mr. Williams. 80%. 79-9, anyway, coming into this Oh, you round it off. I used yeah. to teach a sixth grade, and you round that off. I it's round everything off. Oh. You round it off. I know I owe you about $5. <laughs> I'm just going to give you one. <laughs> McCray. There's a man-to-man defense now. Gil Christie's got to get back in the groove like he was earlier. Yeah, he's going to start looking for his shot a little more. He's trying to get everybody else involved. Here's Gist, turnaround jumper, tough shot. And the rebound comes off to Jawad Williams. Jawad Williams so solid, so steady. One of those great role plays can make the three as well. Missed that one, that would have given him a double-figure lead. Maryland with a rebound. Shooting 66% at this time. I don't care if you played all cut games. And they certainly haven't beaten the likes of Kentucky, beating a good Iowa team out of Maui. Yeah, those aren't layups either. Not a lot of them anymore. They've had their share, but you know what? You've got to have balance in your schedule. Some guys overschedule. Garrison, I think Williams got a hand on that shot. And now here he is on the other end. They get up the court so quickly, but Maryland doing a great job returning defensively. The other Williams, Marvin Williams, knocks it down. He's big time. I'm telling you, Brad, out of Seattle, a great kid as well. They love him at his high school. And this kid has scored them all over him. He will be a special player here at North Carolina. A very dangerous time here with two and a half to go for Maryland. They had a lead at one point, and boy, is it dissipated in a hurry. McCray, that's a big shot, and it rings out and felt in the rebound. They deliberately double-teamed Gilchrist to get the ball out of his hands. And the feed to Williams from Felton is perfect. I think of a T.O., baby. They're on their run in only two minutes. Oh, they are really on fire now. 45-32. to 32. Rebound, Garrison trying to lay it in. Maryland had two from close range, and they missed them both. You have one bad spurt against North Carolina. That's going to hurt you big time. Felton. Tipped, and who's going to get the rebound? Still loose. Last touch by North Carolina. A minute and 46 seconds remaining in the half, and right now it's all Carolina. They're doing it in a variety of ways. They've upped the lead to 45-32. Dave Ramson in the studio along with Jay Billis and Rick Majerus. Coming up on the UPS Halftime Report, historic day here at ESPN to sit down with two of the legendary coaches involved in Hall of Fame Saturday. That plus Jay and Rick will make the case on a couple coaches who should be in the Hall. Thoughts on the first half? Well, this is great for North Carolina to be challenged in this way by Maryland, but you can see Maryland doesn't have that reliable inside game, the dominant presence inside to go to. Terrific point on your part. I'll tell you what, Carolina and collegiate ball pushes it back after a score better than anyone in the game. Brad and Dick, we'll see you guys at the half. 
All right, Dave, see you guys in a minute and 40 seconds. It is 13 straight points for North Carolina. We were tied at 32. Now it's 45 to 32, and it might be getting worse because May just came up with a loose ball, and here comes Carolina. They got that transition game going. Oh! oh. Gator Medley stopped what would have been a super play and a big-time jam from Jack Emanuel. Well, it would have been a house-rocking jam. Jay Billis is 100% right. We talked about it during the show. Lack of post presence inside limits narrow in a situation like this. Did a great job to be where they were to have that lead. That jam that they missed on the other end when Garrison slipped was big. Yep. Remember that situation? Absolutely. Would have put him up seven. At the free-throw line, Jack Emanuel, one of the senior starters, a guy that isn't talked about much, but one of the top defensive players in the conference, maybe all ACC defensive team a year ago. Missed both free throws, but tips it right back to Scott, and Carolina will have another possession. Well, Jackie, very active as well. Good athlete. Gives a great size defensively. Here he nice is with pass. a pass to Williams. What a great look by Jackie Manuel, showing why he's a vital part of this team. What an offensive juggernaut. They can hurt you in more ways than anybody in basketball. Illinois has been the best team in America pre-conference, but cutting the next down, I'm telling you, they're going to be a tough out. I'm still staying with the Tar Heels. 15 straight North Carolina points, and it's easy when you get them like this. There's the little drop, bounce pass, draws help, kicks it off. Excellent play by Jackie Manuel. Look at that look. Boy, as I mentioned earlier, number one in the conference in assists, and you can see why. They are moving the ball around today. This is a good Maryland team. They're up 15 on, and they were down five. That's right. They were down five. That's a 20-point turnaround. And that's in the last about six minutes, 15 straight points, and it isn't getting better for Maryland as just misses the free throw. Man, I have great respect for Illinois. They're outstanding. Their guard combination's terrific. Up front, guys of Powell and Head are terrific. I will simply say that there's no doubt in my mind that Illinois pre-conference is the best team in America. Bruce Weber with my coach of the year pre-conference. But come tournament time, this is my choice, barring any injury, North Carolina, to win six in a row win a national championship. Gary Williams told us before the game in the locker room, I think this is the number one team in the country we're playing, and right now they're playing like it is. It's a turnover, but Felton steals it right back. I'll tell you, Maryland doesn't back down even here. You know what their record is? I mean, it's 12 and 7 right now, North Carolina over Maryland at the Dean Dome. Right. 12 and 7. That's not bad coming into this place. You're exactly right. North Carolina 51 and 16 at home, but seven of those 16 losses have been since the Smith Center opened to Maryland. Here's Sean May, turnaround jumper, and Tanner Medley with a rebound, and he's fouled. On the rebound by Manuel. What happens against North Carolina, you start to double up a little bit inside, give some help on May, and then other people hurt yeah. you from the perimeter. And it really is so difficult to defend. You try to stop Felton, and they hurt you on the wings. They just have so many weapons. So, one on one situation coming up with a half minute left. At the Terps last year, Dan Schumann and I, we had a game down there at the Rowdy Reptiles. Florida was number one in America, and they went down there and beat them. His kids will never be intimidated, Gary, no matter where they go to play. This is a good club. And now Tuesday night, where do they go from here? Life in the ACC? Wake Forest. Wake Forest. Wow. you got to love that schedule. Or hate it, I should say. Kaner Medley at the free throw line, one of the better free throw shooters on the Maryland team. Raymond Fellow told me before the game that this is why you go to college. This is what I love. He said, this is the kind of games. I mean, they've been blowing their last seven opponents. They have absolutely humiliated people. Rebound off the miss by Williams. And so the final possession will be Carolina's bar in a turnover. Roy Williams has a lot of friends here today with six guys, big-time supporters of his program at Kansas. Bob Simmons and Simons and company who came down here. They're going on a basketball journey. They're coming here to the Dean Dome and then they're heading to Rupp Arena to see the Jayhawks tomorrow. And they were wearing light blue, not dark blue, when we saw them before the ball game. So there is the turnover that I said, barring a turnover, Carolina would have the last possession. Now Maryland gets a trip down court. And they could desperately use a field goal here, going to the locker room, something to build on as they throw by 13. 
With 6.6 left, let's see if Gilchrist is a guy that'll take the shot. The way things were going, I don't believe that Gary Weems thought that this situation would be where his club would be down 13 after they had that five-point lead and were playing so well. Momentum certainly right now goes to the blue and the white and blue, goes to the Carolina blue, to their locker room. 23-5 to five run, and at one point it was 15 straight points after a tie game at 32. So some frowns. On the coaches as they head to the locker room. Let's go to Doris. Coach, depth, the major difference from your team last season to this. What kind of impact did it have in the first half? Well, I think we tried to continue running. They want to run, too, but I think it helped us a little bit more that we were able to switch the players around. We didn't make very good decisions those last three possessions. Though. Did a pretty good job with Gilchrist. You pleased on that side? He's awfully hard to guard. we got to continue doing that, Doris. Thanks, Coach. Carolina may be on its way to its 13th straight win. They've certainly got a nice first half shot at it. 47-34, our halftime score. The UPS halftime report is coming up next. Dave and Rick and Jay waiting in the studio. 13-point lead for Carolina at halftime, fellas. Thanks a lot, Brad. So Carolina looking good, hoping for its 13th straight win. Hall of Fame Saturday rolls on here. Coming up, we hear from two coaching legends, and Jay and Rick going to tell us who should be headed to Springfield Mass. Welcome to the UPS Halftime Report. Raymond Felton with a dozen. North Carolina's lead is 13 over Maryland at the half in Chapel Hill, 47 to 34. Dave Revson back in the studio. I'll be joined in a moment by Jay Billis and Rick Majerus. It is Hall of Fame Saturday here on the ESPN family of networks. We have a great one coming up next at 2 p.m. Eastern time. It's one coach who's already in the hall against another coach who probably should be in the hall. Bob Knight against Eddie Sutton. 1,605 combined wins between them. That is the most ever for two coaches squaring off. The numbers are amazing. 74 years, seven 30-win seasons, and eight Final Fours, plus a ton of mutual respect between these two men. Well, I don't think our philosophies, if you really break them down, are too, too different. We believe in good defense. We believe in taking care of the basketball, minimizing your mistakes. It's up to the coach to define the, the role that each player, where your team has the best chance to win. I think that both of us really like basketball. I think that we liked it as players, and I think that we, we liked it as coaches, and, and we both coached it as soon as we quit playing. Hear lots more from those two men at the halftime of the game between Oklahoma State and Texas Tech. You see the active list, the four winningest coaches who are not in the Hall of Fame. Lou Henson was supposed to return today for New Mexico State, but he is sitting out with pneumonia. And you see Eddie Sutton and then Jim Beheim and Jim Calhoun, two guys, Jay, who I know you feel very strongly about. I do. I, well, first of all, I feel really strongly about Dick Vitale getting in the Hall of Fame. With all he's done for the game, I think he should be in. But if, as far as coaches who are currently in the game, I think Jim Calhoun and Jim Beheim both make a great case for getting into the Hall of Fame. Calhoun has created a program where none really exist existed before at least a dynasty type program he's won two national championships he's won a number of Big East championships and has really been one of the best coaches in the game over the last 20 years and Jim Beheim has been an innovator at Syracuse he's outstanding offensively and defensively that 2-3 zone won the national championship in 2003 a couple other final fours to his credit they have both been consistent consistently excellent over a long period of time and that's what Hall of Famers are made of now you're touching on you know, what UConn was before Jim Calhoun got there it's interesting to look at in some other cases here, Rick, and what certain coaches and what certain programs have been since coaches have left. And uh, look at Houston. I mean, with Guy V. Lewis, this was an amazing program. Average just under 20 wins a year, about 14 wins a season since he departed. Now, obviously, it looks like Tom Penders may turn this thing around and get it back headed in the right direction, but it lends perspective to Guy Lewis. And I know he's someone you feel strongly about. No question about it, but I want to tell you the most amazing thing about Bobby Knight and Eddie Sutton. You talked about amazing. Listen to this. On the team bus, these guys start out with Benny Goodwin and his band of renown and are ending their careers probably with Smashing Pumpkin and Dr. Dre. Can you imagine <laughs> going through a career of listening to that on the team bus? But, uh, hey, Guy Lewis, five Final Fours, 69% winning percentage, the founder of Phi Slamma Jamma, Clyde Drexler, and the Dream Shake, Akeem Olajuwon. I should be on Sports Center. And uh, I, I just love Guy Lewis. He integrated basketball in the South to a large extent, at a time when it was politically unpopular, brought Don Cheney on board. Um, 
with that great program there, along with Big E, Elvin Hayes. So I like him, and I like Jerry Tarkanian. 18 conference championships, 79% winning percentage, national championship, four Final Fours. Interestingly enough, both these guys, the overplay, the extended defenses in the era before the three-point shot, these guys were masters in terms of pressure defense and belong there every bit as much as the two guys Jay talked about. No question. And it's amazing. The, only these battles with the NCAA are keeping Tarkanian out of the hall. There's no other reason other than that. And you know what? He didn't do it. He looked like he did it <laughs> with those <laughs> raccoon eyes. And you, bring up, you brought up a great point of Dick Vitale because uh, Vitale, no one has brought more energy, enthusiasm, excitement to the game. Dick Vitale, they should give him a... a I'm not saying I was a coach now. He was a, <laughs> he was a good coach. <laughs> But when he and goes in, trying it for what happened in Detroit. <laughs> That's what you're saying. We want him going in the Hall of Fame with the picture where he, at the Marquette, when he beat Al McGuire, it was a hell of a win for him. He grabs his tie, gives the choke hold the ref, excites, and falls back over on the arena floor on his back like a turtle. <laughs> that would be good. I'm sure he'd be mighty proud to have that in the Hall of Fame in Springfield. So those are the cases for uh, four guys there. Now, a couple guys who are already in will be coaching as well this afternoon on ESPN. You've got Temple and Duke, 2 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. And as we told you, it's Oklahoma State and Texas Tech on ESPN following us. And uh, guys, what more can be said about these two legends? Yeah, they went in on the same day. I was actually there. Both gave great speeches and are great coaches. They've done it differently, but they've both been successful in their own ways. Chase point, really well taken. Done it differently shows you there's a lot of different ways to go about it, but their character is no different. John Chaney also, of course, won a division title when he was at Chaney State, a national title, I should say, before he got to Temple. More halftime coming up. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Welcome back to the UPS Halftime Report. Dave Revson along with Jay Billis and Rick Majerus, UConn and Georgetown as we check out some Big East action. And there is John Thompson III. UConn on top early. Charlie Villanueva. It's the three, UConn on top, 7-2, then Josh Boone gets going, Coach. Here comes college's best rebounder, and especially effective rebound in running the floor in transition. But watch Boone get in there and finish. He's superb at that. UConn on top, 15-4 to four at that point. Georgetown trying to make a run. Brandon Bowman finishing there for the Hoyas to cut it to nine. But this has been all UConn, Jay. Rudy Gay here hitting the three. Rudy Gay, one of the five best freshmen in America. Very versatile. All UConn needs is steady production from the point guard position offensively and defensively, keeping the ball out of operating areas. Uh, it's certainly been an impressive first half for them. They're up 39-19 at the break. And Notre Dame, a seven-point lead on Villanova. Curtis Sumter the leading scorer and rebounder for Villanova, sitting this one out with a knee injury suffered yesterday in practice. That's been an impressive first half for the Tar Heels. Jawad Williams and company on top by 13. Second half coming up from Chapel Hill. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Oh. Halftime just about set for the start of the second half. North Carolina at home, 47 to 34. This game was tied at 32 apiece at one point. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler, Dick Vitale. I got to tell you, Maryland started 12 out of 18. They finished one out of 12. That run that Carolina put on was sensational. 23 and three run was unreal, and they did it. It was amazing. They turned the ball over 15 times, and yet they're plus 13. I mean, Maryland really struggling right now. You saw the defensive effort right there by McCann, and there's the creation for the turtle, getting the layup, and then inside out. They go to the interior. Mr. Bay was dominant early. Then they go to the perimeter. They knock down six trifectors. A brilliant ball performance I'll tell you the first four minutes we talked about over the years so vital especially when a team is down like Maryland they have to come out strong the first four let's check in with Doris Berg Doris two things number one he said wait they have to finish their opportunities inside when they get them the second thing too many big mistakes defensively sagging off giving too much help and not recovering the three-point shooters Dick you just mentioned it six of eleven for Carolina first half Help and recovery is so important when you play it against a club like North Carolina. But it's so difficult to give help off a guy like Felton. He's just really such a dynamite performer. And what Maryland didn't need, a turnover to start the second half, is what they end up with after Beckway had a nice move on the inside, just couldn't finish with the left hand. He was in a little too deep on the baseline. 
statistically in the first half. 58%. Dick and Doris both talk 6 out of 11 from three-point land as they're the number one three-point shooting team in the ACC and fifth in the country. That one for nine really hurts Maryland from the trifecta because they really can on the three-point shot. Look at the the unselfish play. What a great look by Jawad Williams. Jawad That's just Williams. unselfish. That's the way they played the whole game. There's been a ton of assists for every point, it seems. Hey, Brad, last year he would have shot that from the top of the key. Wide open. Instead, he utilizes the jump pass right down to a teammate and gets the thrill. I tell you, they worked on in practice. They had double sessions this week. And one of the areas they worked on was making certain that you acknowledge your teammate when they make a pass. Really learning how to have that team camaraderie, team chemistry. By far the biggest lead of the ball game now. As North Carolina is out in front by 16. Ivekwe has three fouls after that last one. Uh, the three-point play by Jackie Manuel. Harrison outside. And looks like it's going to be a push inside on Felton. Well, Gary Williams' scouting report when I was on a phone with him earlier this week is 100% accurate. He said we have to find some post presence and be able to get some balance. You have to have balance offensively. When you become exclusive in one area, teams can really defend that area. And May lost his balance and picked up a cheap foul out near midcourt as Ebekwe was taking the inbounds pass way out near the midcourt strike. Talking about balance, you talk about right this afternoon after our game, you got Temple against, against Duke. Duke's going to need a big performance out of Sheldon Wings. Hey, you had the Temple game with Rick Majerus against Wake Forest. They played them really tough. Yes, they did. But Marty Collins can play. He sure can. Tanner Medley turns it over, and now Manuel underneath. Had it blocked. May the putback, and a chance for a three-point play for Sean May. I've been so impressed with this North Carolina team. I caught Jay Billis and the guys out in Maui on the two, and they were so impressive then. And then you see them in person like here, and you see all the weapons they have, and you just see a team that really has a chance for greatness. And Dick now, Beckway has four fouls. We talked about both games last year against North Carolina. He fouled out of it. If there was going to be an inside presence, they were hoping he'd have a better second half. He's got to sit down now, a minute and ten seconds here in the end of the second half as May caps off the three-point play. And if Sean May learns something from his dad in his conversations, his dad will tell him that Indiana team, they didn't care about anything but winning. When he had Buckner and Benson and May and Wilkerson, his dad ultimately became the National Player of the Year. Played for Dean Smith with the Olympic team in 76. Garrison. Nice drive with a hoop by Garrison. That's the first offense we've seen out of Maryland in a long time. Garrison with a strong drive. At the lane. Look at the great handle that Felton has. Terrific handle. Ooh, McCants thought about a long three and now drives inside. Trying to leave it to a teammate and try to drop it off the manual. Knocked out of bounds by he's, Maryland. You know, he's not had a big afternoon scoring-wise, Rashad McCants, but his core presence makes them so aware of him, and McCray's done a good job on him defensively, but it makes everybody else better because other people get better shots. Here he is inside. He must have heard us, man. He must have heard us. Oh, Mr. Nestler, he must have heard us. And there now is. it's... 55 to 36 and a chance to make it a 20-point game. They're going to be up 20 on a really good basketball team. A team that certainly is going to win his share of games. Look, look at Ray Felton. I tell you, he's got the whole package now. He's hugging the officials, being a politician. I'll tell you, Doris, watch him. He's hugging the officials. Yeah, he really is a different kid. And Sean May had a conversation with him over the summer. And he said, listen, you're our best player. But the reality is we can't win unless we know what to expect from you on a night-by-night -night basis. You've got to be up no matter if you're scoring or not. And he's, he's obviously shown that today. I'll tell you something else, Brad. Roy Williams told me today he had an hour and a half talk with McCants. An hour and a half, one-on-one, -on -one, after the Kentucky game last year when he put him on a bench and he said you're either going to buy into what we're doing or you're going to sit next to me and he said he really believes that the young man has changed and turned the corner boy it sure looks like it today i'll tell you that much travis garrison with back-to-back -back baskets for maryland but it just cuts a little bit into what was a 20-point lead at 56 36 and there was a little example that coaches can pick up mccants would have caught that and tried to go one on three last year instead he brought the ball back out to get their half court game going williams had it knocked away Way, but it comes to Felton for three. Rebound, still loose. I mean, last year you didn't think his shot had a chance to really go in. He had that really bring it across his face, had the chicken wing look to it. Now at least when he shoots it, you look at it and you say, you know what? That's got a great shot to go down. No doubt. 
Yes. Try to face up, goes baseline, and has it knocked out of bounds by Williams defensively. And a simple motto for youngsters out there. Nothing in life comes easy. A simple word of advice, a little philosophy. This kid made himself a shooter because of 600 shots a day. If you want something, no matter what it is, you better have an unbelievable work ethic to make it happen. Gray on the inbound, trying to go up. Great job defensively, just keeping his feet was McCants. Now it's Gilchrist, and he can't find the basket. Maryland having all kinds of trouble right now. In fairness to Gilchrist, he's really limited because he has no one really to enter the yep. ball in down to the post. So he becomes a player that you can concentrate a little bit more on. Last year, he was able to have a little inside-outside action with Smith. Carolina, an 18-point lead with just under 17 minutes to play. And here comes Belton down court. Now McCants wide open for three. That's just, at home. That's just great basketball. That's understanding. Felton knows he's got the shooter on the left. He goes to the left instead of the right. McCants squares his body. One of the great three-point shooters in the game. Gilchrist will try to answer and does. John Gilchrist's first basket in a long time. He's got 11 to lead Maryland, but get back on defense. Manuel with a chance for a three-point play. Gary Williams can't be happy with that effort defensively. They did not rotate back. Gilchrist makes the three. Nobody comes back, and they get a simple layup. You're not going to get back in the game playing like that. He's going to make some substitutions right now. Here's what Dick's talking about. Nobody home. Manuel fouled by Gist and a chance for a three-point play now. They'd like to get the ball out real quick. There's McCann squaring the body, knocking down the trifecta. That's part of their transition game. Run to that three-point line. So a 20-point lead can become 21 again if this goes, and it does. And what a what a second half offensively. We talked about Manuel not being a big scorer, and he's not. But he's got six of his eight points here in the last three and a half minutes. My friend, I will never forget when I got word they got beat by Santa Clara. I had a number of people get in my face and say, oh, your heels, they're totally overrated. They'll find a way. I want the winner now. I want the winner now. <laughs> On their way to their 13th straight win. Shot blocked and now traveling violation on Williams. You know what I'm getting to see here that I didn't see last year is they seem to now enjoy playing with each other. There's getting that familiarity. I mean, if they can't learn from a Roy Williams who brings all of that winning, averaging over 28 wins a year while he was at Kansas, I mean, they're not going to learn from anyone. If you can't learn from a guy like that, you're in trouble. Well, part of that might have been getting used to the coach as far as having fun playing together. Roy just in his second season. But boy, what a team this looks like right now. And I'll tell you this, I hope people don't forget those three guys, the big superstars. Look at that ball handling ability. Were recruited by a guy by the name of Matt Doherty, who I really believe would be a great choice for the people at Tulsa. I think Matt would be a natural for that job. He's got great work ethic. You know, it's tough when you get your first coaching job when you're at Notre Dame and you come to North Carolina. Right. What expectations are, you know, unreal here. Almost like expectations at Notre Dame in football. Exactly. Where Tyrone Willingham gets unfairly fired after three years because expectations are crazy. Carolina red hot in the second half. They've only taken seven shots. McCants even backed out of the low block there where it looked like he had a shot. He and Felton play catch. Now he will take the long one. Felton, you know, it's amazing. He's only averaging 6.5 shots a game, showing you unselfishness. This is a kid that's the all-time scorer in the history of South Carolina in high school. Just picked up his third foul, but right now his team in command. 15-43 to go in the ballgame. Carolina by 19. Dave Revson back in our Sports Center in game studios. Iowa and Ohio State both trying to avoid 0 and 2 conference starts. That guy's looking pretty good. Tony Stockman, the Clemson transfer, has all day to hit the three there. He has 13. It is Ohio State on top. Brad? Thanks, Dave. I've seen that Iowa team in person, and uh, that Ohio State's playing them great today. But let's talk about the ACC. I have seen uh, North Carolina and Wake Forest, Maryland, and Georgia Tech all now in person. I mean, the top 25 is loaded with ACC, Dick, and, and 
This is an unbelievable job that North Carolina is doing against a team that's certainly not the sisters of the poor in Maryland. Exactly. It's not Cupcake City. But you look at that ACC, every game you're going to have to be focused and come to play. And I'll tell you, they have come to play this afternoon. 23 for 39 shooting. Wow. The reason? Shot selection, sharing the basketball, and playing unselfishly. And that's what they're doing this afternoon. And forcing turnovers and oh. taking it to the hole on the other end. What a terrific offensive player. I know the kid has been maligned. People have been in his face and probably has earned the right for some of that, the way he's acted, at times pouting and sulking, but he's definitely an improved kid, attitude-wise. And you know what I'm impressed by? The fact that he could have easily said bye-bye to college, but he came back. He's a superstar, there's no doubt about it. Tried to hammer that one home, and he's fouled inside by Garrison. So McCants becoming more offensive-minded in this second half. We're going to watch him in transition. There he is going to explode to the basket. The great first step gets fouled. Now we're going to see him taking the ball to the goal. He puts it to the deck. Can handle it. He's been over 20 points four times already this season. 12. They make it 13 now. Great touch. Last year they lost to Texas in round two. I like what Texas... I'll tell you one thing. I salute Rick Barnes. He's suspended for one game, Jason Klotz, who certainly has been a terrific six-man. One of my old roll age guys coming off the bench, and he suspended him for that punch that he had against Memphis. And I'll tell you one thing, the youngster was lucky he got away with it because it was flagrant, could have been ejected, and could have hurt his club in a close basketball game. So let's hope that he learns from it. And I salute the discipline of Rick Barnes. And Klotz is too good a player to put that kind of situation. That's unacceptable. Could have put him on your all WBA, WBC team. Right? <laughs> Be a heavyweight champ. There aren't any good heavyweights anyway. Garrison on a runner. Thomas with the rebound. Here's Quentin Thomas now at the point. And he'll give it up to Marvin Williams for three. One type of bandy to another. You just watch Marvin Williams and you know he's going to be a star. How graceful. Marvin Williams who kept it alive gets a three in the corner. That was Jawad. Jawad Williams. Jawad Williams got the great look. Marvin Jawad. It doesn't matter. Roy, Roy Gary. Roy, we got all Gary. kinds of Williams. We got all Williams here. <laughs> We're picking all Williams team. I think right now you just pick an all North Carolina team. 14-18 to go. It is all North Carolina right now. 69-45. Whatever the Williams. It's a three by any name. <laughs> Mike Krzyzewski will square off at ESPN 2 at 2 Eastern, two members of the 700-plus Wins Club. And also coming up on ESPN at 2 o'clock, it'll be Bob Knight against Eddie Sutton. Look at those four coaches, and I said earlier, and it's a rough guesstimate, I don't have the numbers in front of me, about 3,000 wins between wow. those four guys. Wow. It's almost as many wins as Red Klotz had losses with the Washington Generals. <laughs> <laughs> what I had the Trotters. I Trotters had... did pretty well against them, didn't they? <laughs> I had J.C. Klotz, and I gave him. I said, well, reminiscent of Red Klotz and all the losses. I even had a better record than him. Carolina with the rebound. They have scored. Nice pass. Outscored Maryland 22 to 11 in the first six minutes of the second half, which Maryland didn't need. You know, my buddy Rick Majerus always liked to get wins. I heard he was really disappointed. He was trying to schedule the Washington Generals <laughs> regularly when he was coaching at Utah. Fouls on Strawberry. That'll be his third at the free throw line. Melvin Scott, one of the seniors on this team. Melvin Scott's gone to the bench and is been a guy that certainly can give him some point production. Look at that wing club right there. The numbers we were talking about. Eddie Sutton, 765. Bob Knight, 840. And then 713 and 704. You look at Lou Henson. I hope that Lou Henson gets the opportunity to get his 800 ultimately. He's a guy that's been so underrated in the coaching fraternity. And coming up, Eddie Sutton and Bobby Knight. I'll tell you one thing. We talk about two minds that have a great understanding and a great love for the late Hank Iba, one of the greatest minds ever in the history of the game. Maryland looking for offense from anywhere they can get it right now because they haven't been able to get anything consistent, even with Gilchrist, and he's not in the lineup right well, now. Tanner Medley's been really non-existent in terms of giving him the scoring ability that he possesses. Gilchrist started the game off really doing well, and then they concentrated on him, and they got nothing else anywhere else. 
Log on to ESPN.com to get the latest ESPN and ESPN2 HD schedule. Monday, UConn and Oklahoma at 9. Tuesday night, Ohio State and Wisconsin at 7. And Louisville and Southern Miss getting together as well. That's your ESPN HD schedule for the next few days as Bowers at the free throw line, a 7-1 sophomore, gets his first point. I'll tell you one thing, now that we get into the real season, the second phase of college basketball, teams that have already lost this week, look at Connecticut, Pittsburgh, Iowa, Louisville, who's are really playing to hurt, with a couple of key players out, but now you separate the pretenders from the contenders. Here's a two-on-one. They got numbers, they got numbers, oh, I gotta make that layup, you gotta make that layup, he nonchalanted it. Bowers stuck in there, got the rebound. They think that Bowers could be really a solid player. He's getting more and more minutes. The lost the kid that transferred for uh, Fafana, transferred on him, the big player. He's going to go actually to Loyola, Maryland, play for Jimmy Patzos, one of former assistant coach. Well, Maryland, just when they got a rebound and a stop, turns it right back over. And then they get it right back on the trap. You know, watching these players and how talented they are. If I had out my midseason pick my top players, I would have went certainly right now with Sean May would be my center. I mean, he has really been terrific here in the last seven games. He would be my center. A front of a go to kid not getting much publicity. Ike Diagu down there at Arizona State. He is a double-double guy. Really here's, terrific. Here's your center spinning to the baseline and turned it over off would, his knee. Up front, I'd go with Hakeem Warwick from out of Syracuse. I would also go with certainly I love Chris Paul. You got to go with Chris Paul and Darren Williams from out of Illinois. Honorary captain Wayne Simeon. And in my top ten, I'd have McCants, I'd have Felton, I'd have Channing Fry, I'd have Travis Diener as well, and Mr. Garcia of Louisville. I bet you had a hard time picking your guards. Oh, there's so many guards. <laughs> I tell you, that's the beauty of college basketball. It's the year of the point guard. There are so many dominant point guards. Just in this conference, there's great ones. Oh, you! I think it's the best. Look at this here. Layup oh, look out. Layup Peter Medley is going to help. David Noel up after really hammering him on the foul. I think it's the best Doris point guard play that I've witnessed in my 26 years now at ESPN for one conference to have point guards of the quality of the ACC. Yeah, it's really amazing when you think of Felton and Jarrett Jack and Dan Ewing at, at Duke. It's certainly John Gilchrist among that list. I think when I talked to Gary Williams, he said two things separate John. The first thing is his strength, great body control, able to score with contact, and doesn't get redirected defensively. But what we're seeing for Gary Williams is he also needs John to score a lot for them to have a shot. North Carolina's done a good job defensively with him. There he is, and you, you and I talked with Gary about that before the game. You said he's got to have his A game, and he said, yeah, if he doesn't score a lot and play great, we probably aren't going to beat North Carolina. And that puts a lot of pressure on the kid. You really have to come out because you got to really to have a great team. you got to have all the components. you got to right. have inside, outside, like North Carolina possesses. That's lacking a little bit right now with Kansas without Wayne Simeon, who certainly is a different kind of, they were a different team with him down in that post. Well, they had a big win without him against Georgia Tech in overtime. They had their hands full last weekend. Yeah, Dan Schumann and I had that game. What a great environment. I thought that place was rocking. They're down 16. Come all the way back. Fairness, though, to Georgia Tech. B.J. Elder got hurt, and they yep. were blowing him out prior to him getting hurt. And now Coach Hewitt's having to go with some younger guys in that spot with B.J. Elder out with that strain hamstring, and he'll probably miss three or four Georgia Tech games. We're at the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill. This one was a beauty at 32-32 on our Hall of Fame Saturday. Up until North Carolina put a 23-3 run together before the end of the first half and led 47-34. Much of it because of what they've done inside. They've got twice as many points in the paint as the Terrapins do. Two-to-one ratio inside, and I'll tell you one thing. Again, Gary Williams, a lot of times for your coaches, they really blow some smoke and praise in the other team. Right. I mean, he told us before the game, he was on his committee, he broke down North Carolina, and Every player in every department told us why they're better. And you know what? Gary Williams is 100% accurate. In fact, he could take my job right here. Well, take my job. I'll go on the other sideline and take his job. No, he station. frowns too much, more than you do. <laughs> we got to keep you over here. You haven't lost a game in 26 years, no, exactly. by the way. Exactly. I'm undefeated. Tanner Medley, baseline. Got it. They need that jump shot. I'll tell you one thing, Gary will not allow these kids to fold. They're going to keep challenging and challenging, playing hard. 
line with a little full court pressure. He told us they'd only press following free throws, which they have done at times today. But now they have to pick up the intensity every trip down court if they're to have any chance to get back in it. That's another area of the game. So difficult to pressure North Carolina with the way they handle the basketball. Melvin Scott with a steal. Noel going up, lost the handle. So back-to-back -back turnovers each direction. Tanner Medley's going to take a pull-up 17-footer and got the roll. How big is point guard play? They lose their first game to Santa Clara without Raymond Felton. You watch them in a few minutes we've witnessed out here when he's out of the lineup. They're a different basketball team. There's no doubt. May, nice move to get inside but doesn't finish. And last touch by Maryland with 11 minutes, 28 seconds remaining in the ball game. Maryland's cut the lead under 20. John Lucas leads the Big 12 in scoring and assist to turnover ratio. His Cowboys getting ready for Texas Tech. The tip coming up at 2.10 p.m. Eastern time. Brad? All right, Dave, there's another great point guard. 72-53 right now. North Carolina team that was 19-11 and a year ago en route to being 13-1, and and Melvin Scott knows the reason why. We're the same exact team we've been through it last year, and uh, the only thing that held us back was just selfishness and and not playing together and stuff like that. And uh, I think if we play like we've been playing and just share the ball and just enjoy winning together and everybody, you know, no one no one individual take the credit and we all just, you know, do what's best for the team. And I think we'll be very successful. They have been doing it that way today. Nine players for North Carolina have scored in the game. Here's McCants going to the hole, and he's had a big second half offensively. I get a feeling that he can score anytime he wants. That's how talented, that's how talented he is. Look at this here, nine players have scored today. They got good balance, something they didn't have in the past, and they're so unselfish, and that's the point all the players are talking about. Being unselfish, being unselfish, share the basketball. There is something you did when you played at Providence. You used to share the basketball. that young man. I mean, this is one thing to say we've got to play on Selvers, but Melvin Scott, a guy who started a season ago, lost that position to Jackie Manuel, yet still walking the walk and talking the talk, doing all the right things. Well, I like that. Walking the walk. Oh, wow. Manuel, he's flying the fly. We are really flying, baby. Ten this, points for Manuel. This North Carolina team, exciting, enthusiastic, energetic. Their fans are standing. They love the heels. A T.O. Maybe the only question is whether they'll hit the century mark before this one's over. With 10.23 remaining, they're trying to make some history. Right now, it's time for us to take a look back on this date in college basketball history. I am not retiring. I have resigned as the head basketball coach at Georgetown University. Basketball is a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week job. I take the advice that I give my players. Stop, John, and address your personal life. We're still family, and I'm grateful for that. One of the greats on this date in 99. And, of course, Dean Smith's Tar Heels beat John Thompson's Hoyas 63-62 in the national championship game in 82, and that banner's part of the Dean Dome here. And I know he had a jump with joy when his son, John Thompson III, won his first game in the Big East on the road, beating Pittsburgh. There's no question he's going to bring that program down here at Georgetown. He's got three freshmen playing. John now, a radio guy, been on his show a number of times, doing a great job in the Washington, D.C. area. Funny how much he loved the media as a coach that he's a media guy. <laughs> now he's a media guy. Yeah. Halfway through the second half. Well, that's going to let me segue into something beautiful that I want to share here as I watch that three go down by McCann's. The name maybe doesn't mean much to many of the people out there, but people like Brad and I know the name Al Featherston. 31 years, an encyclopedia in the ACC. Shame on you, as they've let him go at the Duke Herald Tribune. I can simply say this. They made cuts, they allowed Al to go, and that's a major, major loss. He is a wealth of knowledge. That was a shocker around this part of the country, I'll tell you that much. Garrison missed inside. 
old friend of mine just lost his play-by-play uh, -play job with the Carolina Panthers. I don't know, maybe it's something in the water in North well, Carolina. I'm not sure. I'll tell you, one thing I love about going to ACC country is the writers down here have such a passion and a love for the sport that you get all kinds of tidbits. I get all my information. I steal it. <laughs> you never met a tidbit you couldn't steal, did you? Exactly. McCray with that little jump shot. Maryland kids still running up and down, but the floor is getting wide open for some good looks by North Carolina. Strawberry brings it down and leaves it off. McCray, long three, rims out on it. And right now, if you can't do it defensively, my friend, you're not going to get back in the game. If you can't do it defensively, and right now Maryland cannot, they have no answer defensively for the Mar for the North Carolina Tar Heels. North Carolina looks a little bit tired. The guys they have on the floor, I think it's because they're scoring so much, it's up and down the court. They're going to go to the bench, I think, just to get some fresh bodies in there. Roy Billy Williams going to bring back in Sean May not and Felton. You, not bad when you bring in Felton and May. Yeah, that's pretty the good. Bench. That's pretty good. That tandem comes on the floor. So. I tell you, there's no doubt in my mind also that had Bobby Knight still been the coach at Indiana, that Mr. May would have been playing at Indiana. Whistle foul inside. Terry's hammered. And it's probably a back way. And if it is, he's gone. And he fouls out for a third straight game against North Carolina. Two last year, and now this one he leaves with 8.35 to go. And he was a non-factor defensively, rebounding, not blocking shots. Mostly the big thing he's going to have in the scorebook, he's going to have five fouls. Yeah, he really has had a history of getting in foul trouble. Last year they could get away with it because they had Mr. Smith inside, and he was such a factor. But now as he gets to be experienced, he's too important. You know, I mentioned Indiana, and I really believe that Bobby Knight, who I know for a fact that certainly Scott May was so close with the coach, had he been there, that certainly Sean would have probably played for the Hoosiers. And I'm telling you one thing, if I'm Mike Davis, I have to be a nervous wreck. I'm going to tell you what, the mentality which I can't tolerate that exists in intercollegiate athletics today is, if you're not successful, everything is, what have you done for me today? Right. We saw it at Notre Dame in football. We saw it right there in Indiana in football. Three years and the coach Naro left. I mean, gone. The bottom line is, I would think that unless something drastically changes, there could be a call from that AD, Mr. Greenspan, to Mr. Davis, and a change in Indiana. When you talk about football and around the ACC, I just saw John Bonnie, the football coach, at halftime, told him what a fine job he did getting his team to a bowl game. This time last year, it looked like he was going to be shown the door, and luckily... Hey, there he is. There's a coach. Luckily, they gave him this year, and he put it back together, and he's had a great recruiting class already. So they're going to be even better next year, maybe, in football, although they lose their quarterback, who's uh, quite a player. And what about if that mentality existed back when Mike Krzyzewski was at Duke in his first three years? The first two, three I mean, years. first three years, he was under 500. But they had a great athletic director who could see that he was going to be a future star. Plus, he got a chance to coach Jay Billis. He wanted to wait for that. <laughs> As he watched Mary inside with the reverse layup, and the rest is history. Today he's a Hall of Famer. He's certainly one of the great minds in the game, motivator, and he'll be coaching against John Cheney, one of my favorite people this afternoon. On our Hall of Fame Saturday, as Sean May goes the reverse layup and a chance for a three-point play. And, you know, he has worked really hard. Sean's down to about 254. He's probably 15 pounds lighter than he was last year, and you can see that out here. Williams trying to follow the miss with a dunk. And Wave it off. Lane violation. violation. You know, I got a kick out of McCash was trying to get the crowd to start cheering. They're a little quiet again because they got the big lead. And they got a date Wednesday here, which will be. And they have a date Wednesday with Georgia Tech. Mike Patrick comes to town with me. I get such a luck. I work with guys like you, Patrick, Schumann, Musburger. Really? I mean, they, it's they, unbelievable. They should take part of your salary away. Oh, you guys are so terrific. <laughs> I mean, I think Mike is terrific what he does in the NFL. Well, really he's a part of uh, Wild Card Saturday on ABC. Don't forget oh. Mike and Joe and, and Paul and Susie and all of them will be in game one. And then Alan John and Michelle will be in game two on ABC. Doubleheader in NFL playoff football action. This one doesn't look like a football game. This is all all basketball, 86-57, Carolina. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Papa John's Pizza. Better ingredients, better pizza. 
guy who was a great player in Maryland in the mid 90s Keith Booth on the right talking to Evacue who has already fouled out Keith was third team All-American as a senior in 97 at Maryland I walked to him for two and before the game and he said hey Mr. Nestler and I said man I just it seems like it seems like yesterday I was doing your games and now you're over there in a suit he was really so effective inside as a player that's what Dave Dickerson does a great job Mike Lauder runs a new Lauder gets a new one Keith has a player you can see a little, a little bit thinner there he's got a great player inside and outside he was something special yeah, he was very effective Jimmy Patsos moved down over the wall Talk about the Hall of Fame. We think of some of the greats in the Hall of Fame. North Carolina, Larry Brown in the Hall of Fame. The only guy to win an NCAA championship and an NBA championship and a brilliant line. And he loves North Carolina. Ben Carneville, years ago, a terrific coach at the Naval Academy. Billy Cunningham, well, we know about Billy from out of Erasmus, the most popular person out of Erasmus other than Barbara Streisand. And then there's Bob McAdoo. I coached Bob McAdoo for a while before I got the Ziggy and fired. Uh, Frank McGuire in the Hall of Fame, and deservedly so. He was the guy that hired Dean Smith. And you think about James Worthy, you think about people, it's incredible the number of stars that are in the Hall of Fame. Do me a favor, don't mention Barbara Streisand's new movie right now. I just have a feeling you could slip up on that, and we don't need that right now. There's the Hall of Fame inductees. What a list, huh? Not bad. Not bad. And, of course, so many jerseys hanging in these rafters and so many banners from championships of not only the ACC, but of the NCAA. Sean May now with 11 points as he's one of five North Carolina players. All the Tar Heel starters are in double figures right now. That shows the balance that we've been talking about all day long. Yeah, there's that balance. Do you think that a guy has a chance to get in that used to wear a number 23? I think it's a possibility. Oh, wow. What about Phil Floyd, one of the greatest point guards I've ever seen in the history of college basketball? The Hall of Fame, by the way, Dan Schubert and I went on a tour up there when I did the Hall of Fame game. You have to go to it. It is absolutely gorgeous. John DeLever and his people, it is a place, if you want to love hoops, you fans out there, get up to Springfield, Mass. It is a great, great way to spend time. Maryland comes down with a rare rebound on that end of the floor, anyway. And Garrison fouled by May. Garrison's certainly quiet. You know, the Terps don't have anyone in the Hall of Fame right now. The left-hander should well, be. Well, the left-hander, you know, what an amazing record. People don't realize this. 786 career wins leads four schools to the NCAA tournament. And let me tell you this. What about the fact that he goes to Davidson, and he takes Davidson and makes them top right. five in the nation Then he goes the down to Georgia State and gets them in the NCAAs. And, and, I, and then said, I'm just tired. I got a bad cold. I think I'll retire. I remember the day I read that in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. I'm on. I'm retired and that was it I tell you, he did such a great job in terms of charisma and also I'll never forget when he arrived when he arrived at Maryland he said I'm gonna make him the UCLA of the East right maybe they weren't the UCLA of the East but I'll tell you one thing they got attention of people and remember this he played in an era when he had some great teams that couldn't go to the NCAA tournament right. because they didn't win the conference right in those days it was tough I tell you one thing lefty people can say what they want about X's and O's you don't win 786 and not know what this game is about. Plus, he was so fun to be around for all of us for a lot of different reasons, whether it was the fiery personality or the quotes like the one you just saw. I missed that. I used to love being around him because he's the only guy I could be next to, and I had more here. <laughs> no, but I'll tell you, what about the quote when he won the ACC championship 1984 with Lenny Bias? He said, you know what? I'm taking the trophy. I'll never forget, we interviewed him, and after the game, he said, I'm taking the trophy, and I'll put it on, on the hood of my car, car That's and right. I'm going to drive all around. <laughs> Uh, the triangle. He's going to drive all around North Carolina. Oh, boy. What a character. You know, we miss those characters in basketball. The late Jimmy Valvano, the late Al McGuire. That's what I mean. The guys, the guys that were so really fun tried. to be around. Oh, what a move by May off the glass. Sonny Rick Majerus can tell us all kinds of stories about his mentor and Al McGuire. But we really do. Miss those kind of people. Louis Carter's second on asylum. John Thompson in his own way with that towel. Lily Massimino, who did a game last week, a classic, along with Jim Simpson. Nice pass underneath. Side. Williams off the page from Phelps. Raymond Phelps, you can see why. They all love Raymond right down here in Chapel Hill. Oh, I got a feeling they're going to have lots of fun in basketball here. 
and it's not going to be just this year. Roy Williams is going to continually to build. He's an outstanding recruiter, and he's got a Rolls-Royce program to sell. And they're on their way to another 100-point game against a darn good Maryland team. It's 92-59, to just sharing the wealth as Felton Williams underneath, one of five in double figures. Doesn't matter if it's inside or outside, Dick. They're doing it any way they want to. Any way you want it to be done, they are getting it done. If you want it inside, they go to Mr. May. And Mr. May says, yes, sir. You want the perimeter jump? And Scott says, why not? And if you want to take it into the goal, Mr. McCann says, I can't. Jawad says, what about me? And McCann says, I'll go for the trifecta. And then they'll see the little drive for the goal by McCann's versatility. This is the first time in seven games that McCants, at least at this point, is the leading scorer in the ball game. 92.7 a game. They're right on it right now. They have gone over 100 four times already and in the last two games. And now they're about to do it against the number 21 team in the country. That's pretty phenomenal as McCray hits the outside jumper. And you know what? As you said earlier so well, Brad, this is a good Maryland team. Yep. This is not a cupcake. This is not a people that you blow out. This is a club that's got two losses lost a tough game to a good George Washington team back there in their tournament and lost on the road to Wisconsin where it's so difficult to win. In fact, Wisconsin right now at home, they're almost like unbeatable. That's going to be a tough date when Illinois makes that journey out there to Madison. Twelve years ago was the worst ACC loss ever suffered by Maryland. You just saw the graphic and the numbers if they start panning out here in the last six minutes, it could end up being something very close to that in this one. And and Maryland, remember, this game was tied in fact, Maryland had a five-point lead in the first half. Then it was tied at 32. Then it was 15 straight for North Carolina, 23-3 to before halftime, and they just have continued to blow it open. It's amazing to watch. I mean, tied at 32, and you're looking at 92 right now. So you're saying That's 60, 60 to 29 right yes, now. Yes, sir, 60 to 29 nice against math work. Maryland. I'm with great math. <laughs> yeah, you're a heck of a math student. Huh? <laughs> I was pretty good sixth grade math teacher. <laughs> well, we got six left right here, 602. You beat me to the punch. I was playing around with those numbers in my head. I thought I was going to be a genius, but the guy beat me. And whistle foul before the shot. It's going to be on Noel. Don't forget, coming up on Monday night, Big Monday on ESPN. College basketball doubleheader for you. Dick mentioned Hakeem Warwick a little bit ago. 7 o'clock Eastern, his Syracuse team will take on Notre Dame. Then UConn and Oklahoma will get together at 9. Big Monday presented by Bud Light on ESPN on Monday night. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. That's only going to happen one way. If Jim Beheim has direction and guidance on how to find the Syracuse <laughs> airport, because he has not been out of the state, he has to have somebody guide him. Maybe his wife, Julie, can find the airport for him. Well, if you're going to follow some of the airports, you'd be about the best looking one to follow the airport. I would imagine. He We're under six minutes. He overachieved big time. Yeah, he, he outkicked his coverage pretty far. We're going to be up there as part of our Saturday night package. Yeah, too, that'll be we? great. I can't wait for that Saturday night. It's going to be a heck of a program. It's a great game. So the spot knocking it down. Everybody's feeling it. Melvin's got two threes. His only scores of the ball game. Everybody's going to flow. Well, I could simply say to Gary Williams, you are 100% accurate in your assessment of North Carolina. He knew how good they were. He knew the problems they were going to create. And everything he talked about with us before the game has come to fruition here. Thomas, Thomas knocked out of bounds. Yeah, he should have thrown the bounce pass, and he knows it. He's saying to himself right now, I should have dropped it on a dime. You know, psychologically, though, his kids have to quickly put this one to bed and really recover mentally and think about Wake Forest and Chris Paul. All alone. Thomas on the inbound to Noel. Great look by Thomas. I tell you, Pearl to me is the constantly great player in America. Come out of Wake Forest, he's the best. I don't think there's any doubt about it. He can score, he can penetrate, he can make threes. You talk about a classy wins. kid to be around. Too. Class kid too as well. Nice speed down on the baseline, trying to find a handle up and under, and everybody in the pile up, and North Carolina comes out of the pile with it. Thomas. He's having a foul. Nobody called there. And now they've got 99. And that's Mr. Williams again. This time it's Marvin. And now six players in double figures for North Carolina. I love Marvin Williams. I love his upside. I think he, Aldridge, and Randolph Morris are going to have breakout years next season. Could this be the 100 trip? Thomas. Marvin Williams. And he's fouled. 
foul's going to be on Gish. That's his third. And you know what? Kids love playing that style of game up and down. Yeah. And think about what it could have been. They had a commitment from James on Curry, who had those problems off the court, now playing at Oklahoma State, showing a wealth of ability and talent. And also, J.R. Smith, who went to the NBA and is sitting on the pine day in and day out, but he could have really developed by being part of an environment like this. So many kids, they don't listen to the right people. I can understand a Dwight Howard. I can understand a super kid playing who's getting playing time. But to sit on a bench every day when you can be part of an environment like this or an environment across America, one of the major colleges, I think it's absurd. And there's 100 for the third straight game. In fact, the scoreboard in here doesn't acknowledge it because I'm not sure they have a third digit in the lighting system. It's 100 to 64. And now it's 101-64. I know this hurts for Gary Williams. He has such pride as a leader, and that's why he's had such success everywhere he's been. Uh, he's won the ACC title last year. was the first one since 84. I tell you what, Dick, if they're going to keep playing like this, they're going to have to fix that scoreboard to get a one up there in that's front of those lines. They got enough cash around here to they change the scoreboard. They got some cash. cash. There's some money coming in through these doors. <laughs> Baseline three, and Quentin Thomas with a rebound, and the outlet to Miller, who just came off the bench. Thomas getting some playing time. That's the one area of concern. If you see the drive. Wow. This is a guy Terry scores two points of all game, Rashawn Terry, and he has nine. You know, he had a couple of big shots in that first half. Yeah, he did. He had a three, little, especially. Terry was having a control of the tempo of the game. He put an explosive spurt. 23 to 3. You know, they got the scoreboard right now. It was the finger of the scorekeeper that couldn't find the right digit. It's 103 63 now. Oh, so we apologize. We, yeah, we take we it back. They have enough money in here. We should have known that. Hey, wait a minute. Now, we're entitled to a couple turnovers. <laughs> I mean, players get three, four turnovers a game. They think it's a good game. It was a 40 point game until that last shot. Nice back door cut. Scott up and in. Great hang time. He's from out of Maryland. He's playing for a little bragging rights. Last year, these clubs split when they played each other. Nick, there's a possibility this game keeps going this way. That Carolina could have nine guys in double figures. Wow. That's balanced, my friend. Thomas. That's Terry. Whoa, oh, what a pass and what a shot. What a show they're putting on offensively. What there's another show. guy in double figures, Rashawn Terry. My friends, if there's a better team in America than this, they should be in the NBA. I want to see there's him. There's a better team. I want to see him somewhere. I haven't seen Illinois in person. I've seen everybody else, I think, in the top oh. six or seven, and these guys are pretty darn good. Well, that's Tubby Smith about him when Kentucky came over here for an afternoon. I mean, what a terrific performance in every phase after being down by five and could have been down by seven when they had a Duncan opportunity, Maryland. Seven North Carolina players right now are in double figures. That could go as many as eight or nine when we come back. 2.47 remaining. Everybody in the high wire act for the Tar Heel. It's showtime, Mr. Nestle. It's showtime. The Graham brothers averaging better than 26 points per game between them. Joey and Steven getting ready to lead Oklahoma State against Texas Tech. Tip coming up at 2.10 p.m. Eastern time. few scores to pass along to you. Notre Dame and Villanova going down to the wire as they play in South Bend. UConn has just defeated Georgetown and Ohio State a winner over Iowa. Dickie V, I schedule the Washington Generals, buddy, but how about these names? Hillsdale College, Wisconsin Parkside, Grand Valley State, Iowa Wesleyan and Wayne State cartographers don't know where those places are, and they were on the tightness schedule when you were the coach. Hey, let me tell you, Rick, you forgot about Saginaw Valley and St. John's, Minnesota. I tried to calm my alums one year. I said, we're playing St. John's. I forgot to put Minnesota. They thought they were going to see red, the, red, the red storm come up with Mr. Conisaka. Good thing you didn't try to play them in football. They won a lot of championships under Coach Gillardi. Let's go down to Doris. Talk about driving people crazy. Here's a guy who knows something about driving. Yes, the 1999 Winston Cup cha champion, Dale Jarrett. Well, you're a guy who loves speed. What do you think of this Carolina team? Yeah, if I can get my UPS forward to go as fast as the Tar Heels are running right now. I'll be in good shape, but uh, great game, and I think this just shows really how good they are this year. What are your expectations for your upcoming season? Oh, uh, I'm excited about our season. Uh, we, Mike Ford and I have had a year to work together, and uh, we made a big gain last year. Even though we didn't win, we ran a lot better. I think they will challenge for a championship and uh, win a few races this year. Well, we know people in these love, the parts love NASCAR. We'll look forward to it, Dale. Thanks for joining us. Hey, guys, he lives in Hickory. What basketball coach 
Division one, Rick Barnes grew up in Hickory, North Carolina, wow. guys. There you go. Rick Barnes, what a Hickory. Good job. Tell you, that Mason is unbelievable of popularity. I think other than Duke and Carolina basketball around here and Wake, Tobacco Road in general, that would be the biggest thing. There's no doubt. Hey, to Rick Majerus, I had another one. I One time I needed a game. I told my assistant, get me an easy one. I said, I want a cupcake. He goes out and gets me. When he comes in, he says, Coach, I got one. It sounds like a really tough team. People will think they'll be tough, but it'll be a cupcake. Who? He gets me Illinois Wesleyan. Oh, nice job. They come in, and they got a guy. He <laughs> jumped us all over the place. I'm saying, who's this block? I can't believe what I'm, I can't believe what I'm watching here. He's hitting fadeaway jump shots. He's getting us in foul trouble. His name? Jack Sigma. Oh. Jack Sigma. That's not and I good. knew we were in trouble. We were in trouble <laughs> until the Zebras realized that we hired the rest for those kind of games. They knew one thing. If they ever wanted to come back again, he better get his butt on the sideline <laughs> and we were able to pull it out. <laughs> Well, the thing I know about you and Majerus, as long as I'm sitting next to you, I'll always have more hair. When I'm sitting next to Rick, I always look thin. And I know one thing. If you sit next to me, it's Majerus, you'll have more food. <laughs> long three, way off the mark. As we're down to a minute 35. Remaining in the ball game, everybody getting in the axe. So we're getting, North Carolina. You know, we're getting the axe, uh, getting away from the game, obviously. It's well, the game got away from us a long yeah, time exactly. ago. It's been a blowout. It's been an absolute superb performance by the kids from North Carolina. They're all contributing. Everybody's been a part of it. They're still hustling, scrapping. I mean, just a great, great performance. I don't know any way you can put it except saying A+. Plus. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you take away the fact that they have uh, maybe maybe about 19 turnovers. If they didn't have those, how much would the score be right now? Because they're only, at this point, five points away as Miller takes a three that wins out. They're only five points away from the most points they've ever, uh, Maryland has ever given up. Maryland gave up 114 points about uh, 14 years ago to NC State. And here now, North Carolina, a team they split with last year. Last year... It was Maryland winning 90 to 84 at home and losing here by 11, 97 to 86. But it's 109 to 73. North Carolina leading the number 21 team in the country. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If there's any consolation, those kids have to understand that they have put the hurt on a lot of people this year. And you just have to forget this game, go back, and get prepared for your next basketball game. And Wake Forest is waiting on Tuesday. That's, that's not going to be an easy task. This is a tough road trip, as tough as you'll find any place in college basketball. Play Carolina in Chapel Hill and then go play Wake. Wow. Wow. I don't know about that schedule. I wouldn't want it. I want to be where you and I are. But I'll tell you one thing. If there's a guy that can get kids ready to play, it's Gary Williams. Terry, the follow. Terry hit two big shots in that first half. I tell you, it looked like Maryland was going to control the tempo, make it a five-on-five -five game. They got that five-point lead, but it wasn't to be had. But Dan Denai had a great performance by North Carolina. The two Williams will shake hands. One has just added to his resume with his 450th win. That's Roy. And Gary Williams hoped to have a chance today, but he knew his team was going to have to play flawless, and they were not. And it was all North Carolina today, 109-75. to on our Hall of Fame Saturday continues. Bob Knight and Eddie Sutton will be squaring off next. Right now, for Dick Vitale and Doris Burke, Brad Nessler from Chapel Hill, where Roy Williams' team wins it going away. They look all of the number four team in the country. They look even better than that. 109-75 is the final. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.